I'm just going to tackle about the module and where you're going to find it in my recorded lecture. So module five, which will be included in uh, second exam together with module four. So module five is just chem chemical thermodynamics. So thermodynamics look at the energy changes and uh, around these uh, surrounding and since it involves chemical reactions, so we could say it's really thermochemistry, the heat involved in a chemical reaction. Okay, so if you're going to look at the study of chemistry, uh, it's just the science of matter and the changes that it undergo. So whenever it undergo changes, energy is always uh, included to it, okay? So this branch of chemistry gives uh, us uh, a chemist idea of whether a particular process has high probability of proceeding as it's based on uh, energy change. So if you're going to look at thermodynamic, it answers the question, will a reaction take place? So if the answer is yes, there's a follow-up question. If the answer is no, that's the end of the story. So if the reaction, uh, uh, will the reaction happens? If the answer is yes, the next question is how fast or slow the reaction is, okay? So by the end of this module, this is the different learning outcomes that you have to know. So when we're talking about energy, this is what? The capacity to do work. And we have the kinetic energy, potential energy, the different forms of energy, okay? It is discussed there. This is still, uh, chapter six. We're going to look at it. So the SI unit for energy is joule, but the one that is commonly used is calorie. And whenever you're talking about energy, you always have this term, system and the surrounding. So system is the one that you study. Anything that surrounds the system is the surrounding. Now, system and the surrounding is you and I, the universe. Okay? So the changes in energy or exchange of energy usually happen between a system and a surrounding. Okay? So you can have an open system where you can uh, exchange matter and energy. You can have a closed system where only energy is exchanged. Or you have... Uh, oh wait, I just want to clear the thing. So the type of the energy that you have, so you have open system where you can exchange energy, uh, energy and matter can exchange, then the closed system where only energy is exchanged and an isolated system when there's no exchange of energy and the surrounding. So an example of the isolated system is what? In Filipino, natinatawag natin ano? Anyone? Thermos. <laughs> so that is an isolated system. Okay. Now, when we go to this so-called enthalpy, ang tinatawag natin just sa enthalpy is yung delta H. Okay. And related dito sa enthalpy yung delta H na positive and delta H na negative. So you have the so-called exothermic and endothermic reaction. Have you heard uh, about it already? The exothermic and endothermic reaction? Anyone? Have you have the word exo? I don't like this. So when we're talking about exothermic reactions, I'm trying to share it to you.
So you have to look at the reaction like reactants producing products. So when you have exothermic reaction, so that's where heat is released. Exit. Exothermic is equals to exit. Now when you have endothermic reaction, heat or energy is going to enter the system. So if you're going to look at the energy level for an exothermic, usually this is the reactant and this is the product. So the one that you have there, that's the energy that is released. Now for the endothermic, this is the reactant, this is the product. So for you to go up, you have to apply energy. So that's the difference between the two. Okay. So exothermic, the system release the energy to the surroundings. The energy can be in the form of heat or work. Endothermic, the energy is absorbed by the system. Okay. Now, what, what other things that we need to know here? So you have to answer the question here. So sine of delta H, so this is positive, this is negative. Heat is absorbed, heat is released. Surroundings get cold because the system absorbed the energy. Surroundings get hot because the system released the energy, okay? Now, synonymous to this is the Hess law. So when we're talking about Hess law, so I want you, this is still chapter six in the recorded lecture. This is just summation of all react, reactions. So when you add all reactions, the overall chemical reaction, and when you look at the delta H for that, the delta H is just the sum of all the enthalpy that you have. And I'm going to have an example of the Hess law later on. Okay, so in ini in review ko na kung ano yung dapat itakil nyo dito. So for instance here, so if you're going to calculate the enthalpy here, okay, so all you need to do is add all of them to give you this overall reaction. And when you add all of them, whatever the delta H that you have, that is the uh, what we call Tesla. I don't want to do calculation right now because I want you to rest for one week and then by the time we meet in two weeks, okay, you're going to be recharged. Now entropy, what is entropy? Disorderliness. So they said the entropy of the universe is increasing. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Whenever you what we call uh, do something, that event will happen spontaneously, okay? They usually increase in their disorderliness. So when we're talking about entropy, it, it is a degree of randomness, okay? So, in the degree of the, the, the randomness, this is, uh, we can say, uh, when you put ice in room temperature, what happened to the ice? Melts. It melts. Now, if you're going to look at the order of the ice, compare it to the order or the degree of order of the water, it is what becomes more ordered or more uh, more disordered. More disordered. So it more disordered. So if you're going to look at this, whenever you see a system become more disordered, usually the reaction happens spontaneously. Okay, so if you're going to look at the thing here,
you're going to look at the delta S here. So delta S is the degree of what we call disorderliness. So if, if it's more disordered, it becomes positive. If it's more ordered, it becomes delta S becomes negative. Okay. So what they're trying to do as much as possible is find a way if they can predict another thermodynamic quantity, which in this case is your spontaneity. Okay. So if you're going to look at this entropy that you happen here, so from solid going to the liquid, it is becoming more disordered. So your delta S is positive. Your liquid becoming gas. Excuse me. It become more disordered. So your delta S is also positive. But if the gas become liquid through condensation, then your delta S becomes more ordered. If the liquid becomes solid, your delta S is uh, negative, okay? So your solid, your, your, your system becomes more ordered. So that's what it means by entropy. Now, the concept of entropy is needed to predict another physical quantity known as free energy, okay? So they want to find a way to see if a reaction is spontaneous. What does a spontaneous reaction mean? Anyone? Ano ibig sabihin ng spontaneous? Continuous. Ha? Huh? Continuous. Continuously? What do you mean by spontaneous reaction? Na, na, uh, is that a term that you encounter before? When you say the reaction is spontaneous or the process is spontaneous, what does it mean? So for instance, meron akong pen dito. What will happen to this pen spontaneously? It fell on its own, right? So if this process is spontaneous, putting the pen back to the original portion is non-spontaneous kasi there's outside intervention. Unless you're a Jedi, you can use the force, right? But that thing doesn't exist. So when you have a spontaneous process or spontaneous reaction, it happened on its own. It happened spontaneously. Now, I, I like to have a survey with you with this question. Kita nyo? Sagutin nyo. Failing an exam is a spontaneous process. True or false? Sige nga. Yung 21 student. Oh. No, asa na yung tatlo? O yung dalawa? Na yung tatlo? Okay, so let's see. What if I say, what is the spontaneous process if you do a failing, uh, if you fail an exam? You don't do anything, right? You don't do anything. What will happen to you? If you study, is that a spontaneous process? Yes or no? Okay. 
If you attend the lecture, is that a spontaneous process? No. If you watch the recorded lecture, is that a spontaneous process? No. No. Okay. If it's a spontaneous process, you don't do anything, what will happen? You don't do not uh, you don't know anything what, what what will happen If you don't do anything what will happen to you in the exam Okay you fail That's why in my example as I have told you is uh, failing an exam is a spontaneous process clear way on Yes. Okay. Because when we di when we say spontaneous process or reaction, it happens on its own without outside intervention. If you study, you intervene. Okay. If you read the notes, you intervene. If you attend the lecture right now, you intervene. So hopefully, those eight students who are not here, they didn't fail the exam, which I'm going to make the score available later today. So that's what it means with the spontaneous process. And what do they observe? The spontaneous process, okay, usually they become more disordered. The delta S is negative. Okay. So they use that to come up with this so-called pre-gives energy. So uh, uh, delta H is not enough to tell whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. Why? You, you have uh, an endothermic spontaneous process. You put ice, okay, at room temperature, it spontaneously it will become water. You burn your gasoline, okay, uh, spontaneously, or you have these hydrocarbons in the presence of oxygen, it will burn spontaneously, and it produces energy. So that's an exothermic reaction. So the, the enthalpy is not enough to predict the free energy. So you need at least the delta S. Now, for a reaction to be delta, uh, what we call is spontaneous, the delta G should be negative. So for this to be delta G to be negative as much as possible, you want what? A negative delta S and You need a negative delta S and a positive delta H because that's the one that will give you. No, you need a negative delta S. Okay, the, uh, no, a positive delta S that means more disordered, and a negative delta H to give you always negative. No. You need to know this thing. These are the basic questions that will be asked to you in your second example. When will the reaction be spontaneous? So when you have more disorder, which is a positive delta S, and an exothermic reaction, which is a negative delta H. Now phase changes. So these are the different phase changes processes. Okay. So the, uh, the energy, the amount of energy you need to convert one mole of solid to one mole of liquid, that's heat of vaporization or heat of fusion. The energy that you need to convert one mole of liquid to one mole of gas, that's the heat of vaporization. Now, if I combine the two, I have the Hess law, okay? So if I'm going to combine the two, So I have solid, liquid, gas. So here that's H fusion. Here that's H of vaporization. So if you combine these 
that's just age of sublimation. So what is age of sublimation? Age of sublimation is just equals to heat of fusion plus heat of vaporization. So if you're going to look at the reaction, so you have here solid going to liquid, liquid going to gas. So usually this is this, and this is this. So if you add them together, you cancel this. You have this going to this one. And the new delta H of sublimation, there is just the sum of the two. That's a classic test law. Okay. What else? Super cooled liquid, super cooled, superheated liquid. Oh, the thing that you need to remember, the reverse. Vaporization, condensation, melting, freezing, and then sublimation, the reverse of that deposition. That is a sure point if ever they will ask questions like this in your second exam. Okay? And then the phase changes and the phase diagram. So how do we have these so-called phase changes? So this is usually in chapter 11 of my notes. So if you have phase changes, usually you have a plot of energy that is applied and then temperature. So you can start all solids and then solid liquid and then all liquid and then all liquid and then no, solid, solid liquid, liquid, liquid gas. And then you have what we call the gas. So this is now known as what? Your boiling point and this is known as your melting point. So that's the heating curve. So if you have a superheated okay, liquid, so usually it's usually like this one. It is above the boiling point, but it's still in the liquid phase. Now the reverse of that is the so-called cooling curve. So in the cooling curve, you're removing the energy. And if you have a super cool, so the temperature is already down, but it's still in the liquid phase. That's what we call the cool, super cooling. Now for the phase diagram, this is what you have. You have a temperature here, a phase here, and this is a solid, a liquid, and a gas. So here, that's a triple point. And if you have a one atmosphere, you have this one, the melting point, and the one that you have here is the normal boiling point. So that's the summary of your module five. Uh, module five. And as I've told you right now, uh, ready na ba kayo? Ready na kayo? Handa na ba kayo? <laughs> so punta kayo sa canvas at bubuksan ko na ang inyong quiz. Now, sabi sa akin, may correction pa to. At ito yung ano sa amin. We are not allowed to discuss kung ano yung right answer. Nasa na yun. Okay. Um. 
fourth grade, everyone. Oops. Kita na? Yes, boss. Yes, boss. 